Are you confused about how to use layers for Photoshop? Would you like to learn how to combine a silhouette and a portrait to make an interesting effect? I'm Darlene with Digital Photo Mentor, and in this video tutorial, you'll learn how to do just that. This is a clip from one of my recent live streams where I talked all about using layers. You'll learn about blend modes and masking and how to put together an image that looks like this quickly and easily. I do a free live stream here on the DPM channel every week. I'll put a link in the description area below for you if you'd like to join in the live chat. Of course, you can always watch the replay as well. So if you're ready to learn about layers and dive into making a silhouette composite image, let's get started. Okay, so what image might go nicely inside her silhouette? So this one might, now I'm not sure. So what I might do actually is open all of these as layers, okay? And that's how I created this one as well, okay? So I kind of, you see, put her inside the silhouette and then I put the other one in the background, okay? So, I could do that same kind of idea here. Let's let's work with this one because I've already done that one. Okay, so uh, let's do this one as well. So same thing we did with the skater. I'm going to do edit in, open as layers. Okay, now the silhouette is going to be my base layer and I'm going to put the other one inside her face, okay? Now, blend mode becomes really important when you're doing something like this, okay? And you'll see how that comes into play in a moment. You can see it opening the layers and wait for it to be done. Don't interrupt this process, whatever you do, okay? You see where it says loading layers? Make sure it's finished before you do anything, okay? Don't interrupt it. Now you see the three layers and it kind of looks like a mess, right? But we're going to work on this one. So I'm going to, again, put it on the bottom, okay? And I'm actually going to crop to the silhouette, okay? Make sure I'm on clear. I just need the silhouette image. So I'm going to be cropping the other images, but because I didn't do crop pixels, the image is still there, okay? So if I turn this one on and I move it up, okay? It's not cropped off. It's still there, okay? So I'm going to put this one inside. But before I do that, I'm actually going to flip this one. So I want her looking the other way, okay? So how do you flip an image in Photoshop, okay? Because if I just flip the whole thing, all of the images will flip. And that might be okay, but if I just want one layer to flip, let me show you how this works, okay? So if I just want the silhouette to flip, not this top one, you need to go to edit, transform, and flip, okay? That will flip just the layer, okay? Notice this one didn't flip, okay? Now we've got this one on top, okay? I can put her inside the face, but once again, we can't really see what we're doing. So we can dial down the opacity of this layer. So the layer opacity is here, okay? just so we can see where she is, right? Or I can leave it at 100% and change the blend mode, okay? So what blend mode do you think we're gonna use here, okay? If you don't understand blend modes, everything in this first section under darken means that anything that is darker on the layer that I'm currently on, so that's the top one, anything that's darker than the one below will show, okay? So now you can see that the only place this one is showing is where it's lighter, okay? So when it goes on top of the silhouette, it's not showing, okay? But it is when it goes on top of the background. So that's how I created that kind of look. So she's like behind her, okay? If I change the blend mode to any of these in here are looking for darkening, okay? If I change the blend mode to lighten, now look, where it's overlapping the dark part of the silhouette, that's where it's showing. Can you see that? Cool, right? Okay, like so. So anything inside this mode, right, lightens. Now, if I want to make this one bigger because it's, I want it to fit her face, 
right? I may or may not make it bigger, okay? So one of the things on the feedback that I got <clears throat> on this one that I did of Nancy was that the face inside her silhouette was bigger than the silhouette, right? Like you can see her chin is down here, but it's up here. So her face is bigger. Okay, so if I want to strive to keep her face the same size, you can see her eyes are there, her chin is there, okay? I could also decide if I want to rotate it a little bit, okay? Rotate is back onto that same edit, transform, and this time you want free transform. So not under this one, you want free transform. Again, keyboard shortcut, I use this one a lot when I'm working with layers, okay? It brings you up these handles that you can make it bigger or smaller, but you can also rotate, okay? So let's do something like that. So she fits inside. So I wanna make sure, see it's cutting off her nose. I don't wanna cut off her nose, right? So if I want this one over here, we just need to mask it, okay? So just if I just want her face part, okay? Or I need to make it bigger, okay? So that's why I made it bigger on the other one because I wanted to fill in that area, okay? And I kind of don't mind, honestly, that she's bigger in, in one than the other. So it's it's art, like we're just playing, right? It's your art, you get to decide. Okay, so I kind of like seeing the outside of the hair right there. And let's just work with that, okay? So once I hit enter, now I've got this. We're missing part of her face, okay? So we need to mask this one just like we did the skaters, okay? So now I'm masking the top layer. Make sure we have black, make sure we have the brush and I'm masking at 50%. You can see I'm just painting back in her silhouette, right? Like so. And I want the hair on this side too. So I'm going to get a nice big brush and fade in this edge as well. So see, I'm just fading it like so. Okay, this guy always gets in my road. So how do we like that? Okay, so that's kind of neat. Okay, now I've still got this other image, right, on here. Um, let's put this one in the background, but maybe I want to reverse it. So let's invert this one. Okay. So I'm going to free transform again, right? Because I want her over here coming off the edge. And I kind of like her, you know, I mean, her head is cropped in the image, but maybe it's a little too big. I use the keyboard shortcut for transform. Let's go something like that. And once again, mask, brush, and I'm at 60%, so I want this back in. Okay, so I want this full black area here. The other thing I could do, instead of masking this, which is a simpler version here, okay, so if I get rid of this mask, let me just show you here, is literally just put this on the bottom, okay? But now, of course, it's not showing up, right? So I just need to change the blend mode on this one to darken, okay? Do you see how I did that? Do you want me to do that again? So I moved this image to the bottom, right? And then this image needed to show the silhouette. So the only place it was darker, it showed up, okay? There's kind of a weird highlight right there. So I wanna, I wanna get rid of that highlight. I'll probably just clone it out. I like her off to the side like that. Okay, so that's three images combined in a very different kind of way, right? Using masking. So any questions about the blending modes or the masking that I just did? 
screen or lighten. Okay, question. When do you use transform versus free transform? So transform um, is when I need to do any of the following. So under transform, you can do just rotate or scale, right? You can also distort, okay? For example, um, <laughs> distort, you don't want to do this to her, but you can do like stretch it, like do weird things, okay? So we definitely don't want to do that, but it gives you other options, Okay. Whereas free transform is the one that I use the most. Okay. Um, if you just grab the corner, it will re rescale it to the same proportions. If you hold shift, you can actually like stretch it. Okay. Or if you, oops, if you put your mouse on the corner, you get that rotate. Okay. I kind of like her diagonal though. Okay, so that's a very different look than I made before. So again, remember, save, not save as, wait for it to save. Okay, there's the percent down at the bottom. It will tell you, oh, you can't see it because I'm there. Okay, see how it says the percent save down at the bottom here, the little blue marker, okay? Once it's done, then you just need to close. Okay, so close, and then it brings it back into Lightroom. Okay, and I think with the with this um, silhouette, as you can see on this one, I flipped it, but also straightened it so she's looking straight ahead because the silhouette she's looking up, right? So it's angled, and this one is straighter. Okay. So that was combining in Photoshop. Any other questions? <clears throat> could I do a gradient layer on the third image as a way to, I could do a gradient uh, mask. Yes, I could, but I just used, I just used the brush. When you use dark and blend mode on the bottom, does it affect all layers? Um, I didn't use darken on the bottom. I used it on the middle. So let me open this one up again. Okay, so now here's the next piece of this. And I'm going to come and do the a saxophone player in Luminar next. Okay, so you can see the same idea. When you come back to edit this image again, this is another mistake that, that people make. And they end up with multiple TIFFs or multiple Photoshop documents. Okay, when you open it up again, okay, and this is a PSD. Okay, so when we look at this, you could see that's the Photoshop document. Okay. If I want to have those layers open, you go edit in and don't choose smart object, choose edit in Photoshop, edit original. Very important, very important, okay? Because when we open the original, it's going to give us the layers and we can take over where we left off, okay? See that? Layers right there, boom, okay? So everything we just worked on is right here. So what I did, uh, I can do it again if you want. What I did was I moved this layer, okay, from the top to the bottom, and this one was set to normal, okay? So that one was set to normal. So I moved this layer to the bottom, and it disappeared, right? Because the one on top of it is set to normal or full opacity. If I dial the opacity down of this one, you could see the other one underneath, right? There it is, okay? So this is just the silhouette layer, okay? If I change this one to darken, now only where the silhouette is darker, which is right here where it overlaps on the shoulder, that's the only part that's showing. Otherwise, the image below shows through, okay? So this one is set to darken, and this one is set to screen. Uh, if I move this one below, okay, let's set this one to normal. Let's just see what happens here. And then set this one to, yeah, see, we can make a big mess. Now they're sort of all relating. It's how they're relating to each other. Now this one is the problem, right? 
And it looks like I painted with orange somewhere down there. I don't know where I got the orange from, but whatever. <laughs> That's pretty weird. Right. So it's it's how it relates to, yes, it's how it relates to the layer directly below it. Okay. If you enjoy my teaching style in this video and would like a more extensive learning experience with Photoshop, I have a complete course available in our DPM store. I'll put a link to that in the description area below. It's designed for photographers like you who are not as familiar with Photoshop and would like to expand your skills. If you'd like to watch another video here on YouTube, click one on the screen now.